you, Paul, very much. Our next guest is the head writer for the television program Saturday Night Live and also co-anchor of the program's very popular weekend update segment. Here's the very funny Tina Fey. Oh, Tina. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, pleasure to meet you. You've, you've been the head writer of that show for how long? Uh, uh, about two and a half years. Now. Good for you. Have they ever had a, a woman head writer? No, they haven't. This mm -hmm. is, I'm the first. But they haven't had that many head writers right. overall. And so. it's, it's going very well, isn't oh, it? Oh, th thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you started out, uh, I think, as many other people did, and correct me if any of this is not accurate, uh, working in a place in Chicago called Second City, is that yeah. right? Yeah, I worked at the Second City in Chicago, which is a comedy improv theater there. Right. And a lot of people, like John Belushi and Gilda Radner, a lot of people, yeah. like Myers, started there. And, and there, there must be something about both experiences that uh, has a commonality that makes it work uh, either way. Yes, it's, so. it's the only, it's a sketch comedy theater, so it's very similar to, uh, to what we do at SNL. Right. So the big, this is where the main difference is that Second City, um, they serve booze mm -hmm. to the audience. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at SNL, we never, we don't, never have a bachelorette party going on in the audience <laughs> at SNL. We had one lady one time uh, in the middle of the show, uh, like a Friday night show, just stand up and say, I have had it. Just, she was just loaded and she's like, this is stupid. She just walked onto the stage uh -huh. during a sketch. She's like, I don't want to see this anymore. And, uh, and so I tried to escort her sort of backstage. I'm like, oh, we'll just, you know. And she got off into the wing and there's a little set of stairs back there and she fell down the stairs. Oh my God. And she was fine, but it made a lot of noise and it looked like I bounced her. Uh -huh. <laughs> like cool. That's awesome. And that woman was Farrah Fawcett, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to believe, but it actually... No, it's true. I, I just met Farrah Fawcett. Uh, but it's, it's one of those... It's, it's great experience because you're really sort of out on a limb and no net, that kind of right. thing. And, and, and it is improv in the sense of what, what happens when you do it. Well, at Second City, you really are improvising where you take an audience suggestion, and you're really just making mm -hmm. it up together with the other people on stage. Right. Uh, a lot of people think that SNL is improvised, but it's, it's not because you have camera shots. You can't right. really yeah. change. And, and do they get, the, like uh, you mentioned, wedding parties and stuff, do they actually get that kind of thing at the, at the yeah, Second City? Yeah, we get city? bachelorette parties. Right, yeah. and, and like high school uh, graduation oh, yeah, we get proms some, and stuff? We used to do after proms shows, which was torture. You'd do a show at 2 in the morning for a bunch of kids who came from their prom. They're basically brought there to prevent them from having sex. <laughs> <laughs> They do not want to be there. Uh -huh. And they would say to us, you know, this is a young audience, so this is a no swearing show. And uh, I remember a buddy of mine in the company, he didn't like, he did not like that he wasn't allowed to swear in the show. He felt censored by it. And so he went out to the kids and said, you know, I can't say the F word tonight, but that doesn't mean that you can't. And he tried to get the kids to start chanting the, he got, yeah. Well, that's not right. He got fired. He was let go. He was let go. You're, uh, is it safe to say you're a, a newlywed? Is that a I am. Play? Congratulations. I got married in June. Thank you. Thank you. What kind of guy? Uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy. He's a good Midwestern guy. He's from Ohio. Mm -hmm. And we met in Chicago. And uh, he's a theater director. And he's a, he's a real good guy. Mm -hmm. And you both you have a place here? In, in yeah, Michigan? so we both live here now. We, we moved, actually, over the summer. Because um, the place we had was really tiny, our old place. And it also had kind of a rat problem. Mm. Ah. So, <laughs> When you say kind of a rat problem, I mean, <laughs> occasionally you might was, see a rat. What happened? They started doing construction in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful neighborhood, but they started doing construction, and then the rats came out of everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he, for his hobby, he would sit at night with his coffee at the window, and he'd be like, hey, hey how many, guess how many rats I can see right now? <laughs> <laughs> so how many? He'd say, I, I can see eight of them right now with my naked eye. And, he made us. Uh, this is. He didn't hit anyone, but he he made a slingshot and he uh. tried to whip pennies at him. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't hit any of them, so they, all the rats are okay. But you know, a lot of people they, they'll mention oh, rats here and there. But the, the city, there's literally they did a study a, a couple of uh, I guess in the springtime when the rats come out, you know, yeah. and in uh, love. and there, there's really there's like, a, uh, like something like 30 million rats in the city. Yeah, there's more rats than people. Yeah, right? yeah I My, mean we are yeah. ankle deep in rats. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Colin Quinn, who I know from Saturday Night Live, he, uh, the first time I ever met him and ever talked to him, 
he, I walked into a room and he was talking about rats. Mm -hmm. and he was like, let me tell you something about rats. They can chew through steel. <laughs> they can swim. <laughs> they can fit through a hole the size of a quarter. All right. And any rat can jump as high as your face. Ooh, man. <laughs> All you need to know. Some have been known to program uh, network television. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, hey. Do you have a nice, do you have a, that's none of my business, but you must have had a nice honeymoon. Oh, we did, thank you. We, we took a cruise to Bermuda. Oh, that sounds great. It was nice, it was very old-fashioned. It was, I liked cruising. Have you ever gone on a cruise? Uh, years and years and years ago. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's nice. It's, it's a little bit dirtbaggy. Which I kind of. Is, what, is, what does that mean, dirt like baggy? Like people, uh, people laying out by the pool with a bucket of beer, stuff like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so. Maybe. Yeah, and I'm the, we had a lady in the cabin next door who I'm pretty sure was a retired stripper. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, so it was great, and, and then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, why wouldn't it be great? It was great. <laughs> And we, we had a great time, and on the way home from the cruise, it was like a Friday night, coming back to New York, and um, I was going to see Fiesta Caliente, because they have lo Broadway quality shows. Mm. Oh, that's... Ship. <laughs> and it was... Uh, well, that was the, the, uh, the show, show playing Fiesta, on, on Fiesta ship. Fiesta Caliente. And Fiesta I, Caliente. Yeah. And I, I made sure I went early, because the previous night, I did not have a good seat for Jump, Jive, and Swing. <laughs> so I got there early, <laughs> and I was drinking a big frozen mudslide. Yeah as is what you do on cruises. Uh -huh. And the captain comes on and says, uh, everyone, go put your life jackets on and go to your muster station. Wow. So, uh, long story short, the ship was on fire. <laughs> but, oh, one of those deals. It was fine. We ended up going out and being in our life jackets, and, uh, and, the, and there was a guy, the cruise director kept coming on to tell us, uh, you know, updates and... It was funny because pr prior to this, he had referred to himself constantly as Dan Dan the Party Man, uh -huh. which he uh, not he so much dropped. Not party guy now. He dropped yeah, that yeah. Not monitor. while he's helping you into the lifeboats. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they came on and they said, you know, everything's fine, and we're mm -hmm. all relieved. And, uh, so and I have a story for your honeymoon. Have a honeymoon. story. Last get a free lifetime. cruise. We got a coupon for a oh, free that's cruise. Great. great. Yeah. Good for you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Captain. Tina Fey, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. With garbage. First uh, guest, this uh, woman has, uh, uh, well, she's an eight-time Emmy winner. I mean, that's pretty impressive. That is. Uh, uh, unless you're talking about Sesame Street. I'm telling you. <laughs> eight-time Emmy Award winner, wonderfully talented woman. She's the creator and executive producer of the very funny Netflix series, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely, the entertaining Tina Fey. Tina, come right up. Personification of what show business is supposed to be. <laughs> you're, you're, you're talented, uh, you're smart, you're uh, lovely, you're personable, and you're eager to perform. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. That's very kind of you to say. I, I, uh, yes. well, thank you. <laughs> what do you, now when, uh, people have been uh, bombarding me with this question. It's driving mm -hmm. me nuts. When you, you don't have a regular job, yeah. then what is your life? I'm, I'm looking at it like it's just a, a chasm, a, yeah. an, an empty, empty chasm. Well, I was thinking about you this week because I was thinking you're going to retire, and I've had this in miniature form. I, I did a show. We did 30 Rock, and the show ended, and I yeah. had the experience of, of stopping. Um, and it's weird at first. The one thing I will warn you about is that all the things that you got out of doing because you were working all the time mm -hmm. 
are gonna come haunt you now. Oh, no. So like, uh, like parent teacher uh, conferences, right. uh, curriculum night, mm. um, uh, going to your niece's wedding, all that <laughs> stuff. You're gonna do that. Now, like, did you you? You know, if you get anything in the mail that says, like, will you host a gala? Oh, no. Just drink dish soap. Just do. <laughs> do. If you get anything that says gala on it, <laughs> drink, like, contact lens fluid, anything <laughs> to get yourself in the hospital. New York City seems to be the home of the gala. Yeah. Uh, official or unofficial, big yes. or little, there's a gala. Every night. And I, and I was thinking about it, uh, the, the big metropolitan yeah. gala. Yeah. You're going to have to go and to that I was next thinking, year. I've never been invited you're to that You're going next year. Now, have I missed anything? No, next year you're going. You're going to put a solid, big old, like, solid bowl on your head. And you're you got to go. go. You've been there. You I, know what it is. I, did, I didn't go this year. I have gone to it once, and it is... Such a jerk parade. Like, you cannot even. <laughs> it is that's so great. unbelievable. That is so nice. It's that's be great. Beautiful. And then clearly, I'll never go again. But you go and you go into this beautiful space, and it's just every jerk from every walk of life <laughs> is there wearing, like, some stupid thing. And you walk at these huge steps. And, uh, and I went, and I dragged my husband along with me, too, which I'm still uh, in trouble for. And we were going, and it's been, the Met's beautiful. We all these people on cameras, and we walked down this big, long hallway, and we were walking about 10 feet behind this very famous, famously mean fashion designer. And I was like, my husband, I'm like, oh, that's, you know, that guy. And, we're, and, uh, and they had these, what I thought were sort of guards lining the hallway, because they were in these uniforms. And if you look carefully, they weren't guards. They were just sort of beautiful boys in weird outfits. So I was like, okay. And then, so we're walking behind this, like, <laughs> famous guy in this empty hallway, going to the thing. And uh, then I realized that we were about 10 feet behind him, and we just walked into just a fart cloud. Just um, <laughs> this, this famous man. <laughs> just the most toxic, toxic gas that you could put. I was like, oh, this is, this is the insides of a terrible person coming out. And we walked with that, and I sort of got the giggles, and then I looked over at the, the guard boys, and they were kind of like giggling in their sort of vaguely fascist uniforms. And, and this way... <laughs> And then vaguely we, fascist. Vaguely fascist. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down at this long table, and it's, it's just everybody. It's everybody. If you had a million arms, and all the people you would punch in the whole world, they're all there. And, um, names? Any names? I couldn't come to possibly. Mind? They're wonderful people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was there. Clearly, I was one of them. But there was, I was in a, so I sit down, and then I'm sitting next to like another famous guy who's like a CEO guy. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, not Donald Trump. Because um, he's the most famous here. Uh, although he was there, and he was kind of like dancing in his seat. Um, oh, dancing so, in his seat. Yikes. But I look at this famous CEO guy's talking to me, and I think perhaps he was on ecstasy because he, I didn't know him, and he just reached over and started touching my hair. <laughs> and I was like, this is like famous, like a businessman. Like, what is this gig? Like, what is this? Yeah. So I got up, and I was like, I'm just going to walk around and do a lap and try to see if I know anybody at this thing. And, and I walked around, and it was really, it is like Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Brian Williams. It's just like every person in the world. And uh, the person that I saw that I was like, there, uh, you know what, there's somebody cool that, like, I can just sit in the corner and relax with. There's somebody normal. And just to give you an idea of how weird that event is, like, the person that I saw, like, ah, I'll go talk to her, was Barbara Walters. That's pretty <laughs> and good. And I just tried to, like... Hang out with Barbara Walters. Tonight. I'm not going. I'm not going. You're I, going I, next year. You're no, going to wear no, a going. red leather now, how, dress. Uh, earlier on in the discussion, you described it as what kind of a parade? Jerk it's, parade. It's a jerk parade. <laughs> we'll get that right up to the Met. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear that. It's a jerk parade. Uh, we'll be right back with the love of <laughs> everyone. Are you, are you and a Amy Poehler working on a film? Yeah, we did a movie. It's going to come out in December. It's called oh, Sisters. Right. Sisters. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. And you're not going to get out of going because you're... No, no, I, no, no. This is the kind of thing was stop me from going, stop me from going many times because that, that's all you need. That's the one-two punch in American comedy as far as I'm concerned <laughs> right there. Uh, and, and, yeah, but... You know what was... 
What was a big, big deal, uh, and, and I, I hope people understand how big a deal this was, was the SNL of 40th anniversary? Oh, yeah, we had the, the 40th anniversary of SNL. It? it was a big deal. Television, yeah. Yeah. And the people who have, yeah. have worked there, yourself and many, many others. Everybody who ever hosted, uh, you know, every, uh, pretty much almost every cast member, I think, made it back. And I was, uh, I wanted to, I worked on the SNL 25th anniversary. I think it was one of the first things I was head writer for. And so I really wanted to help out again with the 40th, but I was away. Uh, I was doing a movie in Albuquerque. Um, and so, or so they believed. Uh, but, um, <laughs> I was. Um, and, and I was really wishing I could be there to help, and I kept getting these calls. I was trying to help, and they're like, great news, the show was going to be three hours. Now it's going to be three and a half hours oh long. I said, oh, my God. God. I was yeah. getting so nervous because it was a show that everyone rehearsed their stuff separately. It was never rehearsed together. And it's live. And it's live TV. And, um, and I just, and also I thought, well, the, and the whole audience is movie stars. And I just thought, well, movie stars stars they're not gonna sit still that long no. I kept I was like they're gonna leave they're gonna go to dinner they're good like there's really selfish people and they're gonna cut to the audience doing sketches and they'll cut to the audience they'll just be like chairs <laughs> and a lost purse but it didn't the show was great yes. uh, the SNL team are and so whipped, amazing whipped right through it whipped right through it they got a three and a half hour show in exactly to time that's remarkable that really was and yeah. very entertaining <laughs> and, and great fun yeah. good for you and uh, can I ask how the kids are? Please do, because how, how? When are we ever going to talk about this again? So yes, the kids. Well, it's a big Met Gala next year, of course. <laughs> um, the kids are good. They, um, the little one is three and a half now, and she's maybe coming out of not being a jerk all the time. Like she's. Oh, I remember you said that there was some sort of a reflexive anger. Yeah, she's very were... quick to anger. Like you ask her anything, her answer is usually is no, never. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, that's like, that's like your baseline is no, never. No, never, yeah. Um, she did throw a pretty amazing tantrum in, we were in Albuquerque, they were visiting me, and my husband was, he, I was working, so he took him around all day, took everybody to the zoo, and long morning, and then he was trying to get her home, and, and he said she just threw like a, literally like a 40 minute fit, uh, wouldn't, they couldn't go home because she was insisting that she wanted to drive. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. The, the three and a half year old wanted to drive. She wanted to drive like an Escalade. She's like, I'm strong enough. <laughs> Has she driven much? Not that I know of. <laughs> I was like, you should have turned it on. Like, she could never reach it. But he said he had to wrestle her into the back. But she's getting a little sweeter. She's getting into the cute, like, girly mm -hmm. age where they like princesses. Princesses, and, tea parties. Yeah, nail makeup. Polish. Like, I was putting makeup on uh, a little bit the other day, and she was like, I want some makeup. I said, okay, you can have a little, you know, yeah. my makeup home's like colored chapstick, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm giving her a little makeup, and you, you, they get really excited. And the toddlers, they they get they try to start a sentence, and they get stuck in it. You remember this when they go, like, "Mommy, I want, mommy, I look, mommy, I look, pre you, the, mommy," and they feel like you get it, you'll get it out. And then finally she goes, "Mommy, I, I look prettier than you." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, Fine. you're three, I'm 44, I get it." <laughs> Not a contest. Uh, now, now uh, selfishly, uh, and be, be ha on behalf of every parent alive, yeah. when you get to that moment when the kid wants to drive the Cadillac Escalade home, <laughs> yeah. and the kid is three and a half, yeah. and there's a fit, yeah. how do you d d disconnect that? What it's circuitry so do you throw hard. You do. It? You have to, uh, you, they always say you cannot let it work, right? Because if the fit works, then they'll throw a fit all the time. Mm -hmm. And so... I have, on many occasions, carried her mm -hmm. sideways yeah. like a plank. I carried her down the streets of Albuquerque, screaming, screaming and kicking. Yeah, yeah, past like a bunch of mariachis, like <laughs> just like screaming, because <laughs> it can't work. That's the no, only thing I know. You can't let it work. But what, now I don't know what your life was like as a kid, but my life as a kid was, uh, if I even got close to pulling that, oh yeah, they grabbed me. And no, no, no. And then take me and throw me in the car and we go wherever we're going. Yes. Or I'm going to get spanked. One of the yeah, two things. Yeah, it's such a weird... I never would have dared to no, no. Uh, act yeah. up like that. I, 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 did, I didn't wrong. have an opinion until I was 20. Yeah, yeah. That's the way they work that. Yeah. You know, let, let me ask you something. And, and, uh, um, and forgive me if this sounds indelicate, <laughs> but, but you just look wonderful. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. This is... Um, that's a beautiful dress. Thank you. It's a beautiful dress. I, you know, it was not actually lost on me because I always, 
I've been here 20 times, wow. apparently. I've been on the show 20 Great. times. Good for you. Good for Thank me. you. Because, um, because I live nearby and people cancel a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I realized that when you retire, this, this is it. Like, I, I, I'm never going to wear a fancy dress on no. a talk show again. Well, don't say that. No, no, because first of all, it, well, thank you, but it's, a, it's, uh, it's very hard work. If, I don't know if you're aware of the, like, the contraptions. <laughs> There's under here are like, it's almost medical. <laughs> what, there's like a oh, thing in it. Really? Yeah, and it's a lot, and I'm terrible in heels, and I also just realized, you know, I, I dress up like this out of respect for you. Oh, God bless uh, you. I really do. Well, you, I mean. And, you know, I'm not gonna. But for, not, forget me. I but, mean, it's this, just lovely. Just this, for, this, this is it, you know, because. This is like oh, something thank Kate you. Middleton would well, show thank up you. in. And this is it, because I'm not gonna wear, you know, what am I gonna put a dress on for Jimmy? That's creepy. He's like my brother. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna wear like. Like special underwear for James Corden? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> so, you know, the next time you see me, I will be playing charades in a slanket. <laughs> but because this. Well, now, wait a minute. You mentioned is, special underwear? This is. A, what, yeah. What because. Because, thank you. <laughs> because this is. Um, this is my last time wearing a fancy dress on a talk show and, and conforming to gender norms out of respect for you. Um, I, my gift to you is I want to give you uh, the dress. So you can keep it. I don't know if you can hold it. In. You can pull that. Really? Yeah. You can unzip it. So this is it. You know, it's just... Time for another segment. <laughs> so, God bless you, my dear. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my! We'll be right back with first aid. <laughs>